You may know me, I'm Guy Rambo. I'm a Mac iOS developer. I write for 9to5Mac and I do other stuff as well. And my talk today is a lightning talk, not an USB-C one. See what I did there? So yeah, that's not funny at all. So <laughs> I want to talk about core animation archives because this is a technique I've been using for a while and it's not very well known by the larger developer community and it's been used by Apple a lot in the OS and their apps uh, and it's nothing complicated or private or anything like that, it's, it's simple and we can do it. So let's start with this idea that animations are assets and what I mean by that is if you have an animation in your app, there's no reason why that can't be just an item in your asset catalog or a file you have in your bundle. Uh, we do animations for different reasons, but there are two types of animations. There are the animations that occur in our UI with like you press a button and something fades out and, or fades back in. Uh, but that's all automatic now with Swift UI, right? So we don't have to worry about that. But sometimes you have, say, an onboarding flow in your app and you have cute little animations that show like a phone flying on the screen or, or particles or something like that. So for those types of animations, wouldn't it be great if we could have them as files and just play them like they were video? And we can actually use video for that. We, we could use AV Foundation and have a video file, but video files are, first of all, they're big. They're usually several megabytes in size and they are not re resolution independent. So if you are using a video file, you would have to either compromise on the quality or you'd have to have separate video files for each device class. So that's not good. So using core animation for that is great because you can use, uh, you can use shape layers, you can use normal layers with uh, corner radius and stuff like that. And, and with core animation, you have resolution independence. So you have vector data that can be scaled to any size you want. So that's what I mean by animations are assets. So this talk I'm giving right now, the slides, they are a core animation archive uh, in an app I'm running on my iPad. And the tool I like to use to make these animations is this app called Kite. So as you can see here, uh, I have Kite running and here I have my slide and I have the uh, layer tree on the side here. It's just a core animation layer tree that I can use. And at the bottom here, I have the timeline where I can make my animations. So when you have a core animation archive in Kite, you can manipulate your layers in what you see is what you get kind of scenario. So that's great. And Kite will generate code for you if you want to, but I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about here is another technique. So the way this works is you create your animation in Kite Composer and you can use any type of layer you want. You can have text layers, shape layers, you can have external assets, you can have particles like this really cool circly particle thing I have here. And you can create all of that visually in Kite and you can use this option that Kite offers which is export core animation archive. Uh, and that's been implemented per my request, by the way, so you can thank me for that. Um, so, and in your app, you can load that archive, and the archive is just uh, using NSKID archiver to take those layers and make them, turn them into this freeze-dried layer tree that you can load at runtime, just like storyboards work or zip files work. So. It's very simple, it gives you a dictionary and it has a key that's root layer and that's the root layer of your core animation archive. And you can then take the root layer and put it up on screen, you can resize it, you can transform it, you can, if you want to, you can traverse the layer tree and change colors, change content. So I hope you can, you, you can get an idea for what this technique is and the good thing about being uh, archives and, and this is the, 
part of the why I like to do this, is it gives you, gives you flexibility that code can't give you. Uh, so for instance, you can download these archives from a server if you want to. You can author the, the archives, upload them to a server, and in your app you download the, the, the assets and you can, you have all flexibility that core animation gives you without having to embed that in your app necessarily. I use this for my app, Chibi Studio. We have this, uh, sometimes we do promotions for the in-app purchases and instead of just showing like a static icon for the, the product, we have a core animation archive that's downloaded from a server that has a little animation with the uh, icon. And these archives, they're usually like less than two kilobytes in size, so they're very small. And I really like that you can not only download this from a server if you want to, but you can have it in your asset catalog and you can modify the contents of what's in there. If you use video, you can't really do that. If you use uh, one of the third-party animation uh, frameworks like Lottie and, st and stuff like that, you can kind of do that, but it's not as easy. So. I was doing an onboarding screen uh, recently, which I can't show you, sorry. Um, but we had a situation where within the animation that shows up in one of the steps, we had to show the name of the user. Uh, so what I did is I did all of the animation in Kite and I had a text layer. Uh, core animation layers can be named, by the way. I don't know if you're aware of this, but uh, every CA layer has a name property. So I gave this layer a name in Kite and then in my code I can reference that text layer by name and change the text that's in the layer to be the user's name and it integrates with this complex animation I made using Kite. So that's like one of the main reasons I like to use this technique. And also because uh, people who know me know that I'm not really a fan of dependencies, so I don't really like bringing in like a huge animation framework just to like do a cute little animation. So I can use Kite, I can uh, have Kite, and I can export to core animation directly, which is fully native, fully supported, and it works very well. Now, uh, some people ask me sometimes uh, when I talk about this technique, oh, but isn't this private stuff? Isn't it private API? And it's not. Uh, the technique itself is not documented, but if you look the, uh, up the documentation for CA layer, you'll see that the fact that it conforms to NS coding is documented. So that means you can use a keyed archiver with core animation layers. So, uh, it, it, they are not teaching you the technique directly, but the fact that it's documented, that it supports NS coding means that it's supported, so it's not gonna break. And I've been using this for several years and it, it ha hasn't been broken yet. Uh, I'm running iOS 13 on this iPad here and it's working, so I think that's a good sign. So the code and the uh, core animation archive for this talk that, that you're seeing here is gonna be on my GitHub. I'm gonna make the repo public as soon as I go off stage here. So you can look that up. And here are my contacts. You can look, uh, I have a really cool article on rambo.codes detailing the technique a little bit more. And you can find also a link to my GitHub uh, there. So thank you very much for being here. And I have time for questions. So have you heard anything from Apple about uh, you know, your usage of this and if they would make it a little bit easier, maybe expose more so that uh, it could be more widely adopted uh, you know, among small and big developers? Yes, uh, I have talked to some people in the documentation team and they're working on that. So <laughs> that's uh, good news. It's not on the portal yet, but I think it will be soon. Uh, I also use Kite, um, but I recently discovered Flow. Have you tried Flow, and can you compare and contrast them? Flow? It does a lot of the same things Kite does, but also allows for shape blends, so you can like have 
a tween between two different shapes and it'll automatically do oh, the thing. That, that sounds cool. Uh, yeah, I've never used it, but I should definitely try it. Uh, with the uh, storyboards, zibs, and uh, like scene kit and uh, sprite kit files that you can make in Xcode, um, some of us stopped using them because they kind of get corrupty sometimes, like by things you didn't do. Um, do you have any reason to believe that risk does or doesn't exist with using core animation archives? I'm sorry, what's the question? Um, if, if the uh, the core animation archive is a it, it's a flat file at some point, right? Um, so is there any risk of it getting, you know, crufty or just weird bugs put in it by whatever created it or just anything that would make it more unstable over time as it's just sitting in your project file uh, folder? Uh, no, because uh, the difference between you using like SceneKit or SpriteKit is that the, the, the file you added in Xcode is the file you use in your app. But with Core Animation Archives, uh, Kite has its own project file format. So you're working with that. And then you export. It's like working in uh, Sketch and exporting a PNG or something. So um, yeah, uh, the, the problem, I mean, it's as stable as the Kite mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> file format is. So uh, I haven't had any issues. I had one issue one time where Kite was not respecting one of the parameters in, um, uh, in an emitter cell. Uh, but that was like a bug in Kite. And then I asked the developer and they fixed it. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fine. Uh, so since you're not working with the project file in your app, it's more safe than using SceneKit, which yeah, it does get corrupted a lot. <laughs> Does anyone else have any other questions they'd like to ask? By the way, one more thing. I have a, a project on my GitHub that's called Car Player, which is the, the, the file format for, for Core Animation Archives is C-A-A-R, so I guess Core Animation Archive. Uh, and I have a, a project called Car Player, which you can use to open these files uh, in your Mac and look, up, look them up and zoom in and uh, inspect them. And you don't uh, have to use Kite either. So you can, if you want to, you can write your own code that creates a layer tree and exports a file. Or you can create your own editor if you want to. So that's another thing. They should integrate an editor in Xcode. But I, I guess it would corrupt the files, right? <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. Let's give him another round of applause. Thank you.